Have you ever thought to yourself, man, I really just want to combo for 25 minutes and then burn in time? What are you fucking gay? Yeah, me either. So I'm coming at you guys today with the uh, Insector Metal Foe deck profile. This is something that I used to do um, when it was a little more under the radar. I used to bring this to locals and bully some people, but I mean, typically go um, X3 and then just drop in my five round tournament. But um, <laughs> you definitely would get that one cheeky game every now and then where you could pull off the Insector Metal Foe extra link. This build actually isn't focused on doing an extra link just because extra linking really isn't quite as strong as it used to be. Don't get me wrong, extra linking can definitely stop uh, some decks from doing what they want to do. A lot of things might need to go, and I mean, a good majority of combo decks need to go into Halk first before they do anything else. But I kind of just wanted to get this profile out here since, you know, the creator card pull is in uh, phase two now. I swear to fucking God, if you don't vote for a spell, I'll fucking kill you. But that being said, um, you know, the deck is just as inconsistent as it's always been. I mean, the, originally the extra link was a three card combo. Most of the combos that revolve around this involve three cards and obviously your opponent not having any form of interaction. Um, there's some small things that we can do about that, but realistically this is just some super flashy, just like, oh, look at me, look how fucking good I am at Yu-Gi-Oh, <laughs> burn you for fucking 100 with Agave Dragon. Extend the handshake. But yeah, um, I think I'll just kind of just roll the profile from here and I'll do any more explaining in the deck profile but yeah all right so starting off our profile we'll start with the uh, metal foe engine so we'll have the one rare metal foes business gear and then we'll have double wall flame we'll have double silvered and then we'll do double gold driver and double stealing so you only play these nine um, the big the business gear is honestly a cuttable card but I think that um, getting the scale recursion in the end phase after you've already went ahead and did your 30 minute combo is quite relevant so that you can have the pendulum summon ready for the following turn if they don't just scoop to you in your end board. But um, of course the Metal Foe Engines not only uh, it enables your Insector cards but it also just allows you to continuously gain advantage by destroying the trap, um, the Metal Foe's combination. So, yeah, they're really more combo enablers rather than like the main engine in this deck. but. Um, yeah, that's that. You know, they all have the same effect. To destroy a face-up card and then set a Metal Foe Spell or Trap from your deck. So for the Insector Engine, we have the starters, which would be the three Dragonfly. And then we'll have the three um, Hundred Flu Flubler, <laughs> the three Insector Centipedes. So, of course, these are the main guys for the Insector Engine. The Dragonfly, every time a card that is equipped to it is destroyed, you can special summon an Insector from your deck. And then the Centipede says every time a card that is equipped to it is destroyed, you can add an Insector card. So you can add the equips as well from your deck to your hand. So, of course, these are going to be how you continue comboing off the fact that the Dragonfly and the Centipede are not once per turn, except for the uh, ability to equip a card from hand is quite nice, which is why the Smoke Grenade of the Thief and the Insector Sword is so valuable alongside your Giga Manus and Giga Weevil, so that you can use your scales and use your Insector Monsters, your Insector Starter here to... Um, you know get things going before you use the effect equip from hand because again that is the only thing that is hard once return about them and with the high level insector monsters you can of course reset that effect by reviving them from the grave after a link summon you can reset the effect to equip from hand that's those guys so for your extenders i don't really know it's more seems like more of an engine requirement it's hard to give these card rolls because they're just so old but you have your triple insector hornisi and then your alternatively your double ladybug so naturally the ladybug isn't quite nearly as good but it can serve the same role as um the insector hornet to just get your plays going what the ladybug says is if it's equipped you can destroy uh the ladybug and increase the level by up to two of one of your insector monsters so you could typically you know or Rather, potentially, you could go for rank fours and, you know, rank fives or even higher. If you use multiple ladybugs on the same insector, you can go even higher and do like rank sevens or sixes. But we're not really trying to do all that. So, yeah, that's those guys. And, of course, insector says you can destroy him while he's equipped to destroy any card in the field. So it's decent for going second for breaking boards. But, honestly, you have no ability to go second in this deck because your deck just requires so much to do anything. I mean, honestly, by no means is the deck good. But it is just definitely a cool, flashy deck to to play so for your recursion cards we have the double mantis the one ulti very nice not first though so scrub tier but the ultras first so that's something and then we have the double giga weevil so both of these cards serve the exact same purpose they say that you can equip them from your hand which is also not once per turn you can just target one face up in sector you control equip it from your hand to that monster so again like i said it can enable your scales to blow this up and trigger your dragonflies and centipedes before you would go ahead and use the effect to equip from hand and then you know if 
they are sent from the field to the graveyard while they're equipped, you can revive any insect or monster, which is, you know, the really important part. And that, however, is a once per turn effect, so you only get one Giga Menace, you only get one Giga Weevil. Um, I used to play the Cricket in here as well, but I took it out because I feel like the Cricket was mostly uh, important for extra link combo, but like I said, we're not really going for extra link anymore, just because it's a lot of extra work and it's the payoff really isn't as good as it used to be. We have the Triple Smoke Grenade, so, I mean, this is also something that I took from the playbook of whoever uh, submitted this into Table 500. Honestly, I wanted to submit this deck into Table 500 for the longest time, but I never grinded enough replays, never got anything good enough. But this was like almost a year ago. I wanted to uh, showcase the Insector Extra Link, which, by the way, just for shits and giggles, I'll go ahead and sh say what the Extra Link was. It's um, Link Rebo, Trigate, Cer Cerberus, Avermax, Phoenix, and then IP at the other end. So, yeah, it's, it's quite a... <laughs> Quite an extra link. I mean, it's only one negate, but you have all that extra protection to go along with it. This was before Lightning Storm or anything like that existed either, so that's cool. I mean, funny enough, Lightning Storm doesn't even do anything to you because they can't destroy our guys by card effects due to the Nightmare Monsters, but I digress. You know, the IP was an insurance policy. In case something really was going to go wrong, you could break your own extra link and go into a Unicorn and try to mitigate the, the game plan there. Um, beyond the point, you know, the Smoke Grenade is trying to allow you to play through Hand Trapped. You're trying to... You know, summon a dragonfly, equip smoke, and then pop it with a scale, and then we're just gonna go ahead and look at your hand. We're gonna take out that Nibiru, we're gonna take out that Ash, we're gonna take out whatever. Um, you know, Ash doesn't really do anything to this deck anyway, because most of the time you can just chain, chain berry with everything that's going on between the scales and your insectors and the traps going off. You can usually just chain block your entire sequence, which is nice, but Imperm will always beat you. I mean, there's really just not much that can be done about that. So we also have the triple Zek Caliber. This was a card that was only usually ran as like one or two of back in the day, but it's actually quite good for this because it can help you with your loops, brother. So, I mean, it can always get back your... You're pretty much going to be like cycling these for like Giga Manus and Giga Weevil. So like you can search Giga Manus off the first centipede, you can blow it up, and then on the next centipede you can get this, and then you can blow this up, you can add something else. You can add another sword and then you can get a Giga Manus back, and then, you know, you can just keep going and going and going. It's just more ways for you to trigger your Dragonfly without um, using its ability to equip. It's just, you know, that's why the equips are valuable. The only consistency piece that this deck has gained, and really insects in general have gained in the longest time, is Triple Cocoon of Evolution, got the one Italian one, very nice. Um, However, this solves nothing. Like, honestly, this just requires you to have so much. It really doesn't solve uh, a whole ton for this deck. You know, granted, the Banish effect is nice where you get to get the extra draw. You get to put a Centipede back. Really, you shuffle back any insect. You banish this, shuffle back any insect. You draw a card, which is nice. So, um, after you've used your Pico Felina to put back all your Centipedes and you summon them all again, you can go ahead and get at least one extra one and continue to try to procure advantage that way. But, um, yeah, I mean, honestly, like, while this card is quite good, it requires you to have an, inse an insect monster that is equipped with the card, and then you have to play this card. But really, all it's for is if you don't have access to Dragonfly or Centipede, but you have, like, Hornet Ladybug or, you know, something along those lines, um, this can go ahead and try to fix that for you. Or, you know, this can reset Dragonflies, you know what I mean? Like, if you've already exhausted all of your resources to try to use you know, uh, to loop your dragonfly effect, you can then swap it out for a different one in your deck and just keep going, which is cool. But um, again, you know, this really doesn't solve very many problems for the deck, but it is definitely something that we are wanting to include. So for consistency, you just play the one upstart, um, just a placeholder card. You know, we're trying to make this as consistent as possible because the deck just is inconsistent. I mean, for defense, you only have one call by and the one midfield breaker. I mean, basically, this is an FTK deck, so I mean, there's no reason not to include the mid breaker field. So we have it here. This is the one thing that will protect you from Imperm outside of Red Reboot, but I just didn't find room for Red Reboot. And also, I feel like that's just so few and far between that maybe it's just not a good include. Um, and then, of course, for your Metal Foes engine, you have a one fusion and then triple combo. Um, you know, a lot of things can go wrong in this deck. Like, you really don't want to draw your combos. You want to have all them in deck. Um, you want to have all of these cards in deck be before you, you do anything because, I mean, you, you need to be able to always have targets for your Metal Foe guys so you can just keep going. But um, it is quite cheeky that you can, you know, make something kind of work. And like I said, you can chain bury most of your insectors off of the combos and the scales, which is cool. Um, but yeah, like I said, there's too many things that can go wrong in this deck. Um, 
So moving on to the extra, we have one Exceed, we have Bamboozling Gossip Shadow, this is, is to try to play through Nibiru if we don't have access to Smoke Grenade, but even there again, you don't always even have enough resources to do so, but, um, you know, it's something that's worth a shot, so the, the Gossip Shadow, you know, changes Nibiru's effect to both players, draw a card, or the end, any hand trap effect. Uh, you could play Cicada King as part of an end board, I just didn't find room for it, because I'd rather just jam as many links in here as possible, so the one Gossip Shadow as your protection there. Uh, Mithrilium, uh, this is really for whenever you're going into turn three. If you, you know, if you don't have access to Boral Sword, if you they broke your board or something, then you can try to use your, your scales to Pendulum Summon, get this card out. You know, the fusion always puts itself back, which is nice, but uh, the Mithrilium is for just in case. You have Double Pico Felina, it's the same reasoning, you only play two for the, the going turn three, so you can put back all your centipedes and try to get something going there. But, um, you know, you use one for the combo. What the Pico Felina says is, you can, uh, on, when it's Link Summoned, you can discard a card, you can turn it an insect monster, you can equip an insect from your deck, and then that monster gains this effect. You can Digusto Emerald, shuffle three insects, draw a card, so this is what we'll be doing to put all of our centipedes back, and then we'll go ahead and get an extra draw off that, and then we can continue using our dragonflies, which is quite nice. Um, you know, this is an all right link monster. The deck really needed a link one, but you know, I digress. I would honestly rather have a search spell though from the create a card than a link one, just to make everything overall more consistent. Because honestly, the Pico Felina is good enough, but you know, a link one would have been nice. So we have one IP mask, we have one proxy dragon. This is just for building boards. Um, it's really just like a placeholder, so until you turn it into Avermax. We have uh, one of the Destruction Sword Protector Well because the, the the only reason we're playing this one, you really play any generic link too, but I play this one because it is a dragon, because of Agave Dragon. But yeah, the one Protector Well. Um, then we have one Cerberus, one Phoenix. Um, this is for Trigate boards. Also, they're just utility cards. We have the one Trigate. Uh, yeah, this is part of the end board. Uh, we have one Apo. Again, this is also part of the end board. And one Avermax. This is... Uh, part of the end board as well so I mean like we're trying to build something that's similar to like something like this and then you can have bamboozling gossip shadow or if you play the cicada king you have the cicada king as well I mean like you know the apple is usually for three or two minimum but you know you have the um the protection from card effects here so you cannot get lightning storm which is cool uh you have the one negate off this guy avermax is typically made with ip mascarena so that's that um, for the rest of the Link 4s, we just have three more. Uh, we have one Boral Sword. This is just for killing people. One Boral Load for outing things. And then, of course, the best card uh, in time is the one Agave Dragon. So, what this card says is uh, if it's Link Summoned, you can apply the effects in sequence depending on the different types of monsters in your graveyard. And then skip any that do not apply. You can only use this effect of Agave Dragon once per turn. So, inflict 100 damage to your opponent for each dragon. That is why you play Buster Welp, because you're gonna you're gonna be going to time pretty much every time you play this deck, and then this will be your win con. Pretty cheesy, pretty scummy, but you know it's it's what you have to do most of the time. The other effects are quite irrelevant, but we're just trying to get that 100 burn, and then extending the handshake because we've just wasted our opponent's time with these buggy boys with the common rider dot deck. But yeah, that's really all I got. Um, I'm honestly about to take this deck apart because it's just you know no one wants to play against it. I just wanted to get the profile out there because I feel like not not many people. Have ever talked about the strategy i wish i would have started the channel sooner about a year ago so i could have done it back then with the extra link board i'll try to remember the combo because honestly i need i need practice with this deck as well but um if i can get that down i'll go ahead and make a combo video for you guys and get that up if you really want to sit through uh you know 10 minutes of me comboing with insectors because obviously i don't have to wait for responses or anything so it will be a little bit quicker and by then you know if i'm making the combo video i'll have the combo down pat but yeah, man, that's what we got. We got the uh, the Insector deck profile, the Insector Metal Foe profile. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave a like, you know, subscribe if you haven't that whole bit. And uh, see you next time, simps.